today. This is uh, Dr. Nur Hayati Hussain. I think some of you might have met her on the first conversation. And uh, also we have Dr. Azimin Tazilan uh, from University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Azimin is from um, interior architecture and also mostly of uh, industrial design. He has uh, many uh, awards to his name on uh, some uh, sustainable products. Um, I forgot the, the micro, lamp, yeah, you know, the, lamp, the, 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 the sustainable toilet, the all those what he calls micro architecture. But it has a macro effect on, on, <laughs> on the environment. So I think that is uh, quite lucky that we have this now. So today we are going to be talking about um, the Malaysian society and uh, the concern about what is called, what is termed uh, the, the national architectural identity. And uh, this is of uh, very grave concern or very serious concern uh, because there are several approaches in, in relation to defining what is uh, Malaysian architectural so-called identity. Now the word identity itself is something of very controversial. Uh, some people like me do not actually like the term. And uh, there are those who are quite uh, happy with the term. Uh, and, and these are some of the things that we might be uh, looking at, I mean, Dr. Ken Yang says something like, if you are trying to look for an identity, then something psychologically is wrong with you. Uh, I think uh, uh, you don't really know who you are. I mean, that is one perspective of things. So uh, today, uh, we are uh, going to have uh, two kinds of questions. The first part is actually continuing from uh, the, the, the previous conversation. I wanted uh, Dato uh, to actually continue on uh, his background so that we could understand a bit about how he set up his firm and then how he came about to have one of the iconic projects with the, the May Bank particularly and uh, after that only we get into the intellectual discourse about, about identity. So I think uh, Dato, maybe we can begin with that first for you to, uh, to elaborate on, on your uh, part on how you set up your firm. Thank you again for the second part to continue my course then last time when we went. How do I start uh, with my practice? Uh, it has a very hard beginning, but I was lucky enough even before I went to university, I already had some experience as a trustman in not only in architecture but also in planning. And even during my semester year, during the break of the university period, during the those five years, I continually fill my time relentlessly with uh, practical training. So I have ample uh, training to start my own practice. I know what is practice about, and in fact, before I start uh, the practice, I already begin to um, prepare myself in terms of how the office is going to start and even buying a uh, second hand. Uh, typewriter and then I start before I finish off or resign as a lecturer the dean of the faculties at the uh, at uh, Marais. Do you remember what year it was that you resigned? Uh, well, nothing, if I recall it, I tried to recall it, in late in 1967. That's, and I started already just before that, even before I resigned, I started practice at, in my home house, at the back of my home house, the big garage. I stayed at Jalan Travers at the time, a big bungalow, and having an access and having good frontage. And that's where I started at the back of the house. You already have a family then? Oh yes, I have a family, more than a family, you know. Uh, I have to look after three children as well because my first wife left me. Uh, anyway, I started it with the practice at the back um, and doing it all by myself, including typing. I did study typewriting and a pigment course. So I do all work myself, by myself. But at that time, the work I got is very humble, very small. It started with a clinic. It's a renovation of a clinic for a friend of mine called Dr. Ruby Majid, uh, also from Red University at that time. 
that's why I, I knew her and, and start having first, more or less a first kind of practice. Uh, a job is it's just a renovation of a clinic, it's section 60. Later on, I got a house, another house, that's the first house. It's along Jalan 16 as well at the corner. And as the first house, I have a lot of classes in using that. Maybe I was, in a way, influenced by Richard Neutra, mm -hmm. more so than, than uh, me. Anyway, that was a start. It was a very hard start because it is after 1969, of course, after the big riot. And the economy is a downturn completely. And it's very, very hard to get on, to get on a job and to start working. So, <coughs> after that, of course, with the connection, my connection with Zamara, I have several jobs from them, not only from school, but Zamara uh, Junior Colleges, uh, one in Surman, the other one in Kwantan, but also vocational school in Sunai Patani. If I can remember, some shop houses in Ipo and Tanjung Brambutan, practically I run from north to south. Right. Uh, one and then I have a partner, beginning to have another partner called Mr. Ong Kwan Teng. When was that? Uh, that was 1968, probably. Uh, no, uh, well after 1970 71. <laughs> Mr. Ong Kwan Teng, he was working with two in Africa. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay. And then I got another fellow lecturer. Um, what is that? One. I get his name with them. One you saw um, from uh, University Technique, Colorado. So there was three start and I call it uh, architect Persecutu at that time. Oh, the first one. The first one. And he, he was doing part time and only one full time, and I began to have full time practice. And, and the practice grew from small from small, humble beginning. We have the first job, probably the biggest job I ever had at that time, is from the University of uh, Britannia. And there is a school of uh, political science, non political science, uh, school of social science and library. Which was the biggest architect firm as a uh, At that time, during my time, of course, it's during when I Tiga, which is later on we call them the Malaysian community, or different names or together. All these Bootees, No, then you have Abuti Edwards, mm -hmm. Swan and McLaren. It is all, everything else during that time is all ex-British firm. Very few Malaysian firm as such. And perhaps the uh, architect uh, Jurubena Pratiga is the first big Malaysian firm at that time. What about MAC? MAC was before. Oh, before. Because oh, they architect Kupan. That is, they changed the name, more or less, yes. So that was the beginning of that, in a way. And we were more or less the third biggest even during that time. Oh, okay. uh, after we start then, we start getting jobs after jobs, you know, and later on, I wrote in another two uh, other partners, making us five partners. We got one from the big firms at that time, and we changed our name into what we call it, uh, ABM, Architect Prescutu Malaysia. And one of these uh, partners, we have two Chinese, two Malays, and one English, and he was doing the competition work for General Hospital. And that's how we started. We were getting bigger and bigger at that time. But, you know, having that ideas of, of challenging the world and become a corporate architect in a way, you know, it's become big. And we have a new premises at Jalan Medan Tunku Abdurrahman, four story shop houses at the corner. And uh, it didn't go very well because we have different kind of philosophy of views and views and also ethics and this is, is difficult. What we thought of, you know, to have diversity of having 
different kind of partnership, but it is not work that way. Which is, you have the idealistic point of view, you know, to follow up the world more or less with big firms and so on, so you must have become big and bigger partners and so on. But it's very difficult if you don't have the same kind of work ethics. I'm a work, workaholic person. I can work until 2 o'clock in the morning. And that drives me, you know, it drives a lot of people mad as well. Uh, when we have the partners like that, and one of the partners will say at every time at 3 p.m., he will leave the office to bring off. And when we question him why he had to leave that, because there's a lot of work to be done, and he said that is where we should meet people, influential people, and how we get job. And after two years, three years after that, there's no jobs coming, and he still keep on playing. And there were so many things like that, and some of them says I work on on regular basis, nine to five. I will do my work, my part of the work, and so on. But architecture is not like that. Yeah. Uh, your inspiration comes at different times. Sometimes deadline comes very sooner than you think, and you really have to work very hard. And also the competition is coming in. I must say during that collaborations of five partnerships. Uh, we do not dwell in any competition. But before that, even on my, on my own, when I started earlier, I did compete in the, even in the big competition, such as one of, of this is the Civic Center, which is one in Petarangiaya, which we got into second. I even uh, entered international competition in, in London, and that is London North. Which I, I didn't well, get, central. Central, which I didn't get anything, but at least I got exposure. Right. And wherever there is a competition like that, I would enter. Right? And that takes a hell of a long time, you know. Uh, but that said, become part of me. Even when I was in, in school, uh, in my third year, I entered uh, several uh, national competition in Australia, and I won one, even during my you know, during my student days. So competitiveness is part of my upbringing already. It's, it's nothing. So when you have big partnership, that doesn't work the same way as you are. And it is very difficult. In the end, you get most of the job. Not only that, you do most of the work as well. And, and then that's, I thought to myself, what's the point? And that's where I broke away. That was in 1977. After 10 years? 77. No, no. Oh, 67. From uh, 71 to 77. Oh, okay, more or less. In that big partnership and so on. Of course, I was a loser in a way because when I parted and they challenged about me taking part of the work that actually I designed. When I designed, I was working on it, uh, such as. Tanjung Jara Resort Hotel that won uh, the uh, Agahan Award. When they took over, they got the award, yeah. I didn't get the award. Yes. So I did a lot of job like that. When I left, they don't even, I cannot take the job that I got it myself. And uh, we ended up going into court, and in the end, they released me. The end of two jobs, which is one is Bangunan uh, Datuk Tana, which was Etika building today, the tall and slim building, and also Hong Kong Bank building. But that's two buildings that towards the end of the period. So I was struggling there when I restarted my own under my own name. Luckily, during the partnerships, I did not use my name. Uh, legally, if I use my name, I cannot even use my name. Oh, that's an illegal term. Luckily, it was under what they call it corporate name. corporate name, and therefore my name is not linked in any way. So I did start a very hard start. In the beginning, I did not know where to go, but I got great encouragement from my wife, who really think very much of me in a way, and said, I have every confidence in you, you will succeed. I myself haven't got that, you know, because I don't know, I said, 